Still good though. 32 years old? Who would believe that? You can smell him roasting. Smell that? I smell coffee. The next station is Tokyo. The doors on the left side will open. It's July 2007, and we're in Tokyo for the annual World Barista Championship. But before we get things started, John Sanders wanted to take me to Ginza for a cafe visit. Two uh, lambrezos. So double. The method is called nail drip. Medium coarse ground coffee is placed in a cotton flannel pouch attached to a wire handle. Hot water, just off the boil, is then carefully dripped onto the coffee to start the hydration process. The kettle is a custom design by the owner, as is pretty much everything else here. Junko Abi has been working here for nearly 10 years and she's mastered the technique. It's a meticulous process, and once the coffee has reached its saturation point, she starts to pour the water a bit heavier, always going around in circles to make sure the coffee is kept saturated. Later in the process, she reaches a turning point and the brewing begins in earnest. The stream is steadier and the brewing more frantic. The control is amazing. Finally, she reaches the pulsing stage and the brew builds to its crescendo. Just a couple more pulses and a few more milliliters of water and the brew reaches its conclusion. This is coffee making as I've never seen it before. The craft and the attention to detail is astonishing. To finish, the coffee is transferred to a hand-hammered copper pan for a quick turn over a gas flame to reanimate the coffee. And then the brew is finished. Pour it into a thin walled porcelain cup and serve. But how did this place come to be? Surprisingly enough, it all kind of started with World War II and the German love of Sumatran coffee. With an eye towards expansionism, Japan joined Germany and Italy to form the Axis powers in the mid-1930s. Because of this alliance, Germans, being quite fond of Sumatran man healing, would warehouse their Indonesian coffee in Tokyo as a waypoint on its trade route through Siberia to Germany. With the breakdown of relations with Russia and the Axis powers' eventual defeat, much of this man healing coffee was left sitting in a Maibashi warehouse in northwest Tokyo. It would be this Indonesian coffee that would be the springboard to this coffee shop. Uh, we're going to share. Okay. We're settled in and it's time to get down to business. The menu is a veritable tour de force with a range of coffee experiences to whet your fancy. Starting with the simple cafe creme, blended coffee with milk, you can then try the coffee without ice. Chilled coffee served with coffee ice cubes. Then there's the fancier stuff. Café à la glace with house-made ice cream and coffee liqueur, or the ever-popular Blanquet Noir Queen Amber, sweetened coffee, chilled on ice, and then served with a dazzling preparation that floats the evaporated milk over the coffee. It's a real crowd pleaser. Smell that. The earthy uh, Sumatra smell. Definitely a lot of fruit in it. Nice. Got acidity for Sumatra. We have to try this, Jay. Wow. Pretty nice. Wow. Very nice. According to author Mary White in her book Coffee Life in Japan, the owner, Ichiro Sekiguchi, is considered by some to be a kohi maniaku, a coffee maniac. Sekiguchi built this reputation with his fastidious attention to detail. Everything here has been considered, accounted for, and custom designed by the master himself. From the drippers, to the kettles, to the pots, to the grinder, to the cups. In fact, it took Sekiguchi 40 years to find just the right artisan to make the thin walled cups he needed to serve his coffee. Despite all this, the one thing about Café de Lombre that separates Sekiguchi from the rest is the aged coffee. Green coffee, wrapped in paper bags, sitting in an environmentally controlled room, waiting years to make it into your cup. Years, if not decades. 
And the star means coffees are over 10 years old. I think we have to try some of these. Now, look at that 70s. This right here is their harvest date. We're going to have to try a 74 Cuban. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We're talking about wine here now. That's amazing. Uh, it is. I really want to taste that. 74, 84, 94, 04. That's 32 years old, that coffee. Remember that leftover Sumatra Man healing coffee in the Maibashi warehouse abandoned by the Germans in 1945? Three years later, Sekiguchi would use that coffee to open the Alkaloid Beverage Research Institute on Sotoborodori in Nishiginza. It was here, in his newly founded laboratory of coffee, that Sekiguchi would hone his craft and build a legend. On today's menu, the coffee goes back to a 1970 Colombian. But John's got his eye on the 1974 Cuban. Cuba. 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 So, this one is a little bit light taste. Is that okay with you? I would like to try it. Mm. Would you like to try to check the smell first? Mm. Would you like some more? Yes. The shop we're in today was actually built in 1970. After fire damaged the original store and forced Sekiguchi to move here, across the district, on an alley behind Chuodori Street. The shop is neither expansive nor diminutive. At 22 seats, it's just about right. 12 can sit at tables along the back wall, but the magic is at the 10-person bar where Fujihiko-san demonstrates the kata he uses to make the coffee that he's been honing for most of his life. But how many years has Fujihiko-san been making coffee? She's more of a... Thirty. 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 Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> his uncle. Yeah. Fujihiko has been working under his uncle's tutelage, making coffee to his exact specifications since 1980. Every day for 27 years. The reality is that there are coffees on the menu that have been here longer than Fujihiko himself. Another cup, Jay? Absolutely. Okay, two more. Two more. Your choice. My choice. Your choice. <laughs> We're two coffees in and going deep. He gets out the, the good book. <laughs> After trying the Queen Sumatra and the 1974 Cuban, John has decided to let Fujihiko-san guide us. This is something I enjoy doing at quality restaurants. Let the chef be your guide. After all, who knows the coffee best than the people who work with it day after day? By this point, Hayashi already knows that we work in coffee, so he takes a deeper moment to consider which coffees he will present to us. But... We're already fans. While we enjoy great coffee, it's this communion of craft, artistry, tradition, and focus that wows us. For us, to be in a place where others take so seriously that which we also take seriously is an exciting occasion. An occasion that we want to savor for as long as possible. Kenya roasted just two days ago, is that okay with you? Beautiful. Uh, is this a uh, dry processed coffee or wet? Or <laughs> Dry. Washed. Washed. Okay. Sorry. Got that on film, Jay. I'm sorry. Despite our little mishap, both Fujihiko and Maki Uchida have been very gracious with our many questions. Even with our language barrier, they're very welcoming and accommodating, even sharing with us their formula for making their coffee. Media. Fifty. She wants to uh, get uh, just fifty cc coffee for this cup, and then. So um, it's, it's know, really my, a volume my issue. My English ability is a little bit oh. poor. <laughs> that, that, that's okay. I think it's a volume issue, actually. So he's just. He's just 50, 50 cc's, yeah. Mm -hmm. For 18, 50 cc, 18, 18 grams. grams. Yes. 
or they do 18 grams for 70 cc's or 100. They can do the strength uh, by just adding more water is what they do. And also, maybe, you know, when you make a co cup of coffee, so you can feel the smell, smell oh, yes, yes. changing. Oh no, is there... <laughs> At first, you, you try to have more. I have to go to junior high school again. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe you can feel something changing in the right. drip. Right. So, also, we try to make something you know, from that, that kind of... Oh. So kind of what he's trying to say is uh, through the aromas and that they want to bring the character out of the coffee. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you okay. for your translate. I think that's what you're trying to say is mm -hmm. every coffee has its own character mm -hmm. and by individually picking the area you can bring that character through also the coffee. They change day after day. Yes that's they do. That's the why he tries to get everything from coffee, the smell and uh, looking like and, and trying to Yes. After 27 years and with his uncle at 93 years of age, it is Fujihiko who is now the standard bearer at Café de Lombre. To start the brew, he preheats the cup and then prepares the nail, making sure that it is in the correct and optimum shape to hold the 18 grams of medium coarse ground coffee. Both the fabric of the nail and its metal handle are handmade by Fujihiko himself. It is this fastidious attention to detail that expresses the Japanese ideal of kodowari, the pursuit of perfection. After so many years mastering the technique, only the hand is needed to know that the water is at the desired temperature. Fujihiko begins the brew with a very slow and controlled stream of water from the kettle. As the water begins to fall from the spout, he moves the nail in concentric circles, carefully wetting the coffee. Americans would not have enough patience for this. Yeah. They still wait. They want to go. The water slowly pours from the kettle and the circles grow in diameter as Fujihiko exposes more of the coffee to the hot water. To hold back the water flow with such control is incredibly difficult. And add the circular control of the nail with your non-dominant hand and you realize that this is nothing short of true mastery. His concentration is focused on the brew. Nothing else interferes. As the brew progresses, the water flow increases slightly, but not too much. Remember, he's only brewing a 50 milliliter portion of coffee. As he gets close to the finish, Fujihiko raises the nail to see clearly how much coffee he's brewed into the copper pot. It's almost time. Some pulses of water, a check on the volume, a few more pulses, and the coffee is finished. How's that? This is really good. Actually, surprisingly that it's uh, 15, 16 years old. This is the 1991 Komoshi Osaka. Someone really wow. hates that taste. <laughs> and Doesn't like that really taste? Like it. Someone it's, really hates it. It's a normal Bourbon <laughs> taste, char yes. Character is very strong. Very good Too character. Much. That's the reason why. So far, we've sampled five coffees spanning 32 years. Coffees from Kenya, Sumatra, Brazil, and a Cuban. We've been here for nearly an hour, but we couldn't leave without having one more. This is the uh, Mocha Extra Matari, a 1992 uh, harvest year. Definitely got some character. A little bagginess. But this is the, is this a blend? The mocha? I don't know. Or from Yemen. Comes from... Hmm? Okay. Come from Yemen. Yemen. Yes, yes. This was my first time to visit Café de Lombre, and I'm blown away. Everything that they're doing here excites me. From the handcrafted approach of brewing coffee to this crazy-sounding aging of the coffees. It makes me want to go home and try it myself. And in the years to come, I would, as well as visit this place many times over. The master, Ichiro Sekiguchi, was there, sitting in his office alcove, quietly smoking his pipe while overseeing the work being done on his behalf. The master is friendly and open for a chat and a photo. 
With our limited Japanese ability, we were merely able to greet him and say thank you before heading back into the megalopolis outside the door of this Showa-era coffee oasis. What they're doing at Café de Lombre is completely different than my work in coffee. I'm meticulously brewing each cup by hand, custom crafting each piece of the puzzle. Is this madness? Is this the result of a coffee maniac? If it is, then that madness appeals to me. This is what it's all about. This is awesome. Done by hand, served by yeah. hand. This is amazing. Living the dream 